Hey there everybody, it's Ryan from Cataclysm Now, and tonight we'll be playing the first engagement scenario from Pacific War. Uh, it's going to be uh, Pearl Harbor. Now the way the game is set up, we've got engagement scenarios, battle scenarios, campaign scenarios, strategic, strategic scenarios, and they sort of scale up in terms of complexity, uh, in terms of the rules. Um, the game actually comes with a couple of different rule books specifically for uh, the different types of scenarios. But I thought I would just go through the engagement scenarios um, and sort of uh, explore and learn the game that way. Uh, the first one is Pearl Harbor. And um, it's pretty uh, stripped down. There's only two battle cycles. There's no uh, opportunity for the Americans to do uh, detection or alert. Uh, none of their units can be activated and any hits uh, on that first turn are doubled. That includes against um, naval units and uh, air units. There's also a rule there for uh, the first die roll uh, has a minus five, and that's to simulate um, torpedo planes uh, against the battleships. Uh, the victory conditions are pretty simple. Um, the Japanese need to score four or more hits on six of the eight battleships, and then they also have to destroy 12 or more uh, air steps. So here are the special rules. Essentially, it's stripping away a lot of the normal procedure, including uh, who can search, what the lighting conditions are, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then here on the second page, um, we have uh, the setup uh, for the units. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a peek at the board and uh, see um, how the raid goes. Now, so for the sake of the learning of the game, I have created um, two task force uh, task forces for the carriers that are hitting Pearl Harbor in these two task force task forces here, including the screens. There's a small chance that if some American planes survive, that they can search and launch a retaliatory uh, strike against the carriers. Not going to be likely though. Um, so we'll swing down here to the actual lineup here. I'm not using the battle board. Uh, a lot of these don't fit in there. So the way that the, the game sort of boils down to the, or at least the scenario I mean, is that the Japanese, although they have achieved surprise, to meet the victory conditions they have to divvy up the, their air power judiciously. So I want to prevent, well first and foremost I want to take advantage of the negative five first die modifier. So I'm going to take the carrier air group um, five and six here who are at full strength. So they both have, they'll have those eights to roll against this group of uh, battleships here. The first die roll will be a minus five. So there's a, a good chance. So I'm going to do inflict maximum damage the first turn, hopefully get four steps on these four battleships. And then in turn, I want to completely destroy the air base and really not destroy the airbase but every hit that's inflicted on the base there's a step of air that needs to be taken so i'm going to send the bulk of my of the japanese air forces to smash the installation there destroy the air force and then when they come back they don't have to worry so much about if it's coordinated um because if if they come back um, and those planes are alerted and they search especially with these long range aircraft here um, those planes are going to be much harder to destroy since they'll be air, uh, airborne. So these four, uh, with their variable strengths here are going to hit the airplanes or the, the air forces. And then these two are going to hit the battleships. If everything goes according to plan. They'll fly back, refuel, rearm. And then when they return, they'll concentrate on the rest of the battleships. Okay, we'll be rolling on uh, this sort of unified uh, air and naval combat results table. Uh, as you can see, the uh, top row there is the modified strength. And depending on the roll, we will go ahead and follow it down um, diagonally until you re uh, land on the result. For these first strikes, um, you'll see under strike combat, um, we will be doing this line here. Um, and that's for fighters versus naval. And then uh, you can see four lines down. It's going to be air versus installation. Now, be mindful that the first round is going to, um, all the hits are going to be doubled. 
So let's go ahead here. So this first one here is going to be hitting uh, this group of battleships, Arizona, California, Nevada, and Oklahoma. So it's going to be rolling an 8 on the CRT, but minus 5, roll a 4, which becomes a 0. So 0 on the 8. The whopping 5 hits, which turns into 10, and they have to be allocated equally. Um, but then we also have to roll, because it's a 0, we have to roll for a critical hit. And it's a 1, so there's no additional 1s. So we have 10 hits so far. We'll save that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll roll for this one as well. And that's rolling on the 8 as well. That is a 1 on the 8. And that is 4, so that's 18. So we're looking at, or 8. So we're looking at 18 hits total. So that is just absolutely catastrophic damage. So it's going to be 4 each. Well, it's going to be 5, 5. So the Arizona is going to have 5. California is going to have 5. And the Nevada. And the Oklahoma will have 4. So already 4 of the 6 battleships that they need 4 hits or more have uh, been hit. So these two will regroup and they'll go back to the task force. This is going very well for the Japanese. It'll be much easier to come back and just inflict four hits on any set of these. So we'll go through these. Um, we've got this one here. It's um, Each damage takes away one from each of these factors. Now this is going to be um, ground attack. So they will be using the, the six. So that turns into a five, and a five, with insulation, oh geez, that's a zero on the five. For air installation is four, so that turns into eight. And then the critical hit, we have a three that's nothing, so that's eight hits. We'll allocate them here after they all come swooping in. So eight hits so far on the airbase. And then remember, the Japanese only need 12. So they're already going to hit their objective. But if they keep hammering the airfields, then the Americans will have no planes left. So this is going to be a five as well. That's a nine on the five. It's no effect. It won't destroy any on the ground. This is a four. A two on the four. It's two, and that turns into four. So we have four more hits. So they got their 12 steps they needed. And lastly, we have another four hitting the airfields. That's a seven. A seven on the four is no effect. So the Americans will be able to choose the, um, the casualties. Uh, that's kind of the downside of striking the installation versus striking the individual um, the the individual squadrons because um, or I shouldn't say squadrons the individual wings because um, at this point with strafing uh, you you're allowed to strafe and attack the individual ones if you catch them uh, on, on uh, unalerted and by surprise, but I opted to hit the installation. So I'll divvy up uh, and see what um, if there are any surviving American air units. In terms of American losses, there's uh, one hit on the uh, 16th pursuit group, and then we've got um, three hits on the 11th uh, bomber group with this long-range aircraft intash, uh, uh, intact. This is going to be crucial in terms of hunting down the uh, Japanese task force. So those last couple runs didn't do as much damage as they needed to. Uh, so uh, they will be able, if they detect the task, uh, the airstrike coming back, um, then there's a possibility that um, they can intercept 
and then launch a counter strike. I mean, it's only three steps. They're going to be able to have to actually find the task force. But we'll go ahead and uh, roll for uh, the coordination to see if the air group is coordinated, flying back for their second hits. They're going to be running towards the Tennessee and the West Virginia to inflict maximum damage. But now, because the Americans are alert, they'll be able to use flak fire, depending on if the stack is um, alerted. And then they'll uh, be able to launch some combat air patrol. Okay, the Japanese were able to roll coordination, which will help with CAP procedure. Uh, and as they flew closer to Oahu, um, the long-range aircraft um, was able to detect it as it moved closer. And because it was detected when it moved in, the Americans were able to scramble, uh, technically this damage is removed, scramble up to 18 steps, which they did. They got the long-range aircraft off the ground and safe as long uh, as well as with this bomber group here. Which these two surviving will be vital because with the disadvantage player phase, they'll be able to try to locate the carriers um, and hit back at them. So right now we're going to do cap, and then we're going to do flak, firing at the attackers, uh, and then we're going to resolve the attacks as we did before. So here with cap procedure, um, it just boils down to rolling the anti-air. Um, so this is going to be three uh, versus five here. So we'll roll them both at the same time. Consult the tables. Japanese score to zero on a strength of six. That's three. And then with potentially additional hits here, seven, that's one additional hit. So that's four. Wow. That uh, basically reduces the, that uh, to basically one step not completely destroyed actually if they hadn't made their goal before of getting 12 hits now they have they just got four more so that's 16 air steps uh, but since fire simultaneous uh, they had a one so they're three and they had rolled a one before um so a one only three against cap it's only one so this two hits becomes three hits Tuck them up a little bit there. All right, with flak procedure, uh, essentially four um, ships and the air base can lend fire against um, this whole group here attacking. Uh, so we'll take some, we'll basically take, well, these have been reduced. So we'll take the flak of the Maryland, the West Virginia, the Tennessee, and the Mahan. The Ma the Mahan. So it's going to be eight altogether, plus the any aircraft value here is four, so it's going to be 12. So it's going to be flak power of 12. Let's see what the Americans can do. The roll of three on the 12, going down to it's only two hits. The Japanese will choose, they'll go ahead and take hits um, on these fresh ones here, here, and here. All right, now all the Japanese need are um, four hits on each of the Tennessee and the West Virginia. And because they've been grouped together, um, after the Tennessee takes a hit, the West Virginia will have to take the next one. So there's a pretty good chance that the Japanese will pull through here. So again, so we're going to be doing uh, rolling for sevens here. No doubling this round. We have four on a seven against the naval. It's two hits. So keep them, keep this tracked here. Two hits from him. We'll do another roll of seven, which is a one on the seven. Four hits. It's going to be six in total. I'm just going to be overkill at this point. And then for the rest of these, we'll go one, two, and one. 
So we're going to be rolling a four on seven. It's two more hits. All right, after it was all said and done, as I skipped ahead there, uh, enough hits were taken to completely sink the West Virginia and the Tennessee. So these units are going to regroup, and they're going to fly back uh, to their task forces. The American units will land, and then they'll be able to do their disadvantage player move. And it'll be interesting to see if they can find the Japanese tasks for task forces and strike them. Uh, just a bit of clarification. I don't think I did it on camera, but as the um, Japanese carrier groups were flying back to Oahu, I was rolling to see if they were detected on the way. And that's not how that works for air missions. That's how it works for naval missions, but not air missions. So essentially a, a, an air group, as long as it's not intercepted in the mean, uh, as it's traveling to the target hex, it can only be searched for detection once when it goes into the hex. Uh, it still was detected, um, that first three that I rolled um, to detect it still applied. So that combat is still valid. I just was doing it uh, not necessarily in the proper way. But um, we're learning as we go. The Americans did, so simultaneously, I should say, and then the next breath, the Americans are launching these measly forces against this um, giant, the giant air group, and we still have, um, they're trying to hit one of these task forces. Um, I think they'll go ahead, and they're pretty much identical, but they're going to hit task force one. That's if they survive um, this madness here. They were detected, um, so the Japanese were able to scramble. Um, let's see, what, what capabilities do they have? They have... Um, yeah, they, they have enough because um, the carriers technically count as air installations for the sake of definitions, but they have enough to launch all of these uh, against. Um, so we'll roll to see what the damage is for, um, oh man, there's only one escort. Yeah, this is, this is doomed to fail. Uh, we'll roll and see uh, what the damages are and if any of the uh, American uh, fighter planes can get through. And none made it through. Um, actually, that little exercise helped uh, elucidate some of these modifications here on the side. So you have your escort or your cap unit go up, and it's going to fight against the escort and the combat simultaneous there. Um, but in situations like this, because I was thinking if it's just one cap versus one escort, how the heck... Um, are you able to damage any mission units? So any spillover to that uh, tactical uh, bomber group. And um, here's the rub, here it is. So for every three steps of L2, well, any steps of these. So basically uh, these different levels are the quality of the pilots in the aircraft. So L0, you're gonna need 12 extra steps just to get a, a plus one. Obviously it's sort of a force multiplier. Um, the L2 units are four times as good as the, so it doubles essentially each level. So I had 21 extra steps in addition to the ones fighting here. So they gave it a plus seven, plus seven on the six tables. So I was rolling on the 13. Uh, as you can see here, any of the results of, uh, cause it was uh, against an uncoordinated um, mission um, cap, uh, it was five hits. Uh, and so that spilled over one for the fighters and the rest of the three applied. So they didn't even get through. Um, I didn't roll for the Americans because at this point uh, it doesn't matter. But broadly speaking, uh, when it comes to victory points, let's see. Um, we had two battleships completely sunk. Uh, West Virginia, Tennessee. And then we had um, enough damage on the Oklahoma, the Nevada the California and the Arizona uh, to warrant a victory for in terms of the battleship points. And then um, I think it was 16 steps of 
air losses, well, including these here. Uh, so that's well exceeds the uh, Japanese victory conditions. Just wanted to look real quick in um, Pacific Crucible and take a look at the historical results. Got a handy map in here. Um, as you can see, the Nevada heavily damaged, repaired. Arizona was a complete and total loss. Tennessee damaged and repaired. West Virginia sunk but raised. Oklahoma capsized. Maryland damaged. California sunk and raised. It's interesting. It's uh, titled uh, Mahan's Worst Case Scenario. Um, it's interesting because uh, Ian Toll, he posits that um, there's actually one scenario that could have actually been worse than Pearl Harbor, and that's if the Pacific Fleet without the carriers was caught at sea and uh, attacked by the deluge of uh, Japanese uh, torpedo planes and dive bombers because any uh, any ship sunk during that would have gone to the bottom of the ocean as opposed to the bottom of the harbor. So we could have looked like uh, at a complete, total, irreversible uh, loss there in terms of the battleships. Um, but in terms of the overall rate of Pearl Harbor, the uh, Japanese failed to hit um, the oil tanks and uh, as damaging as it was psychologically in the short term, it provided sort of the, uh, the central rallying cry to carry uh, public support and morale uh, to the conclusion uh, of the war. Anyway, that was the first engagement scenario, um, Pearl Harbor from Pacific War by Mark Herman. Uh, and published by JMT Games. My plan is to go through these, I think, one by one. Uh, so the next one will be Savo Island, and we'll be taking a look at uh, naval combat. So if you're still watching, uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.